Hi everyone, here is a 20 minute speed run of a 7 hours animation showcase in Roomba. So let's go. We open Roomba and load our stage. Here is an Alembic file, but it can also be a USD file. We configure a few settings like the view frame. Then I create a new Persp camera and I rename it and orient it to look at the stage and I save my scene. Now I'm going to import a video ref. I create a media layer in which I drop a 2D animatic video file created with Storyboarder. I set up the range of the shot here around 170 frames. Then I create an image plane and connect it with the imported video and the main camera. By configuring the image plane opacity, I can get the animatics playing on the top of the scene as an overlay, like this. I create an extra viewport to see the characters I'm going to import and create a specific layer for each character. Then tweak the layer color and rename it with the character name. To truly assign each character to a layer, I select and key every controller of each character in the related layer. With my workflow, this sorting step is really important. Then I lock the layers to avoid any new controller's animation within those layers. Finally, using the Perth viewport, I place the characters at their initial position with the animatics of all I help. Like this. After staging my shot and placing my characters, I create a rough animation for the main camera also using the image plane overlay to help. Then I clean the animation using the curve editor. For this step, I'm gonna rely a lot on the animation library. This tool is super useful to save and share poses and animation from one shot to another. Here I'm using it for body pausing. So let's pose. Along with the animation library, which is convenient to pose the ends, I'm also working a lot with the picker tool, like you can see. The picker is user-friendly and allows you to manipulate the character controllers without selecting them. Most of this step is done using the main camera view with a zoom-in picture option that makes it handy to get closer to the small details. Posing with Roomba is really easy and intuitive. No need to select controllers in the viewport. The selectionless manipulation is super handy. Here I'm working on the golden poses according to the animated storyboard. Those poses are structuring the animation narration. On this run cycle, I am using Roomba's mirror tool. This tool works on any rig and is super convenient to easily create a left footstep from a right footstep. Like this. This really speeds up the posing process. In my animation process, I animate poses with details as soon as I start the blocking without omitting the fingers or the faces. When working on high-end poses, the vision on the final animation is clearer and it will be time-saving when coming to the breakdowns poses. Moreover, Roomba intuitive and user-friendly posing tools are helping a lot and makes me want to finely tune the poses. I'm working on each character, one after the other, always being careful to activate its associated layer. It's a little gymnastic that's easy to catch with Roomba. Anyway, locking the layers in the previous step spares any potential mistakes. As you may have noticed, Roomba's timeline is always showing me the full set of animation keyframes. No need to select anything to get the timings. That's super convenient to visualize and set up the character timings. 
Here, I'm gonna animate one of those robots with more details by refining my blocking poses to get the right dynamic for this falling animation. To create a falling animation on the second robot, I just need to copy paste the animation keyframes from one robot to another using the timeline. Then, using the curve editor, I select the second robot animation and use the mirror animation tool to easily create the mirror version of this animation. Finally, I create an extra layer to tweak and adjust the posing on the second robot. Once this is done, I can merge this layer into the main one. As you can see, it was a matter of minutes to create the two robots blocking animation. I go back to the posing of the main character and finish it. I update my camera animation at the same time and I stay focused on the main action. I check from time to time the consistency of my action by displaying the storyboard. Rumba's character selection and manipulation system, its speaker and its very intuitive library allow me to be very efficient on this first step of my animation. Now I'm going to import a prop, the weapon held by the main character. I'm using the snap tool to snap it to the end, using a purse view to wedge it in the character's hand. Then I create a constraint between the right end and the weapon, and the second one between the weapon and the left end. A constraint is represented with a specific layer, easy to set up and continuously showing the state of the constraint. I finished my first animation pass called the rough block, which contains all the golden poses and clearly defines my action. This rough block is usually the first shot you'll submit to review to the supervisor and the director, waiting for feedback. I'm now working on the advanced phase of blocking. Because the action is more readable, it's time to work on the pace and the dynamic of the shot. To do so, I'm going to add several key pauses, anticipations, overshoots, and the make breakdown. I'm using the between tool a lot. It's equivalent to the twin machine in Maya. Most of the new poses I create are in-betweens of my golden poses. I spend between 90 and 100% of my time in the camera view, using all the posing tools at my disposal, the picker, the library, the between tool, the mirror, etc. etc. I stay focused and immersed in the action, so the animation process is both efficient and comfortable for the animators. I have the sensation of freely playing with my character, which is very pleasant. I zoom in on a regular basis to get as close as possible to my face, and work on the detail of expressions, ends, and so. And thanks to the animation cache, I can replay my animation in real time with no need of computing a play blast. It helps me a lot being able to see where I am in the animation process and refine the timings quickly. I switch from one layer to another in two clicks to animate the different characters and props as I need them. The result of this blocking phase is 
from a timing point of view, already very detailed with a key every two to three images on the large part of the shot. Here is the finished blocking. The rhythm is set and my action is therefore more precisely defined. Ready for a new review by the supervisor. Now let's dive into the polishing phase to finish the animation. First, I create a new layer for each character and rename it uh, with the character names underscore polishing. I then copy and paste the animation from each blocking layer into the new reality polishing layer. I then mute blocking layers by clicking on the eye icon. I do this for each main character. I am not doing it systematically. For example, here I don't do it for the camera or for the props who are likely animated. But I do it for my three characters. It all depends on the shots and the situations. The steps allows me to preserve a visual history of my blocking before attacking the polishing, in which I will add a lot of keys. If needed, I can recover pieces of my old animation. It can be useful if I get lost in the keyframes of my polishing. Here I'm working on the polishing of the animation. Polishing means that the animation is cleaned up. To clean the animation, I respect the rig hierarchy, so I start with the pulse. I mainly use motion trails for this cleaning phase. I will rework the spacing of my animation by refining the curves that appear in the camera view. I make sure that the curves are logical, smooth and pretty. I refine the accelerations and slowdowns. I clean up the motion gaps and all the unwanted glitches. I'm doing the same with the upper body. I take the opportunity to amplify the upper body delay in relation to the pelvis and add some scratch and stretch to my animation, which will make it more organic. I only work in translate mode which requires a rig with a spine that works in FK and IK. I zoom in to get as close as possible to my curves and finely tune the trajectory of my motion trails. So same for the third main body volume, the head especially for Curtin's character. I'm also working on the head's delay to match the action dynamic defined in the blocking, still working in translate mode. I remain immersed in the curves, reworking and do very little playback during the precise cleaning phase. This method is in my opinion much faster than working with the curve editor, even if it lacks a little bit of fineness when working on the depth of in the space. But it's balanced if you animate like me in poses to pose. The blocking stage having defined the choreography of my action and their movement in space. So beware, this approach generates a lot of keyframes, hence the benefits in having preserved the blocking layer in the scene. So in Rumba, controller's orientation can be displayed using the motion trail. This feature helps to clean the rotations just like we did with the translation.
Once the main volumes of the body are set, I'm working on the limbs of my character to apply the weight feel of the character. So I'm starting with the feet, updating the trajectory and the contacts with the ground, only using the viewport. I will produce the same steps to update the end's animation trajectory, mainly focusing on the translation channels. So again, Roomba's posing system proves to be extremely handy and allows me to manipulate the end of an animated arm in IK mode, setting it in FK. During this step, I also update the posing of the fingers and the curves and shape of the arm using the elbow controller. So using the motion control is truly efficient allowing me to animate quickly by being immersed in the camera view, focused on the pauses and the trajectory clean. Moving on, on to the next step, let's work on the face animation. I focus on the face expression pace, the eyelids movements and the lip sync. With this shot, most of the work is done on the large character's eyes, taking care of the gaze and the eyelid spacing, especially at blinks. So there is no lip sync here, so most animation turns out to be pretty quick. Once my main characters are clean, I move on to the secondary characters, reproducing the same process as for the main ones. In this case, the animation of the secondary characters are quite simple, due to the single black body. So I play around a little with the Cabreditor and use Roomba's ghost tool on the ends to see the poses before and after the current frame. So this is very useful and powerful tool and as you can see it works pretty smoothly here. So with the body mechanics and facial animation of my characters done, I can start working on the animation of the secondary elements. The hair, the tail, accessories, jewelry, whatever. Here the leaf on top of the main character's heads works like a strand of hair. To make it easier, I create specific layers for those secondary elements. This allows me to dissociate the animation from the rest of the polishing and blocking layers, and helps a lot to visualize their timing. So I work from the first to the last frame, letting the main animation drive and direct the animation of those secondary elements, adding other shots and delays depending on the weights I want to give to these elements. So I refine this pipe bar working almost frame by frame for the most dynamic types. And here we are, my animation is finished. So I hope you enjoy watching my animation workflow on Roomba. Thanks a lot and see you around.